What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher with The Duran, and I'm here with Peter Lavelle, host of RT's super popular show, Crosstalk. Today we're going to be talking about civil war at the G7. No, it's, I'm sorry, G6 plus one now, okay, at least now. <laughs> what's, what's going on, Peter? Just, just break down the chaos. It, it, for me, it's on so many different levels. Of course, uh, the top layer is a disagreement over tariffs, all right? Um, I've said uh, for weeks now, um, Donald Trump has a good point, okay? Um, we have 70 years of preferential t tariffs to American allies, um, and Donald Trump says he wants us to stop. Un uh, unfortunately for Donald Trump and the United States, you can't undo that so quickly, and that's his impatience. Um, but we have to, you know, it's not said very much in the mainstream, but the U.S. gave preferential trade and tariff agreements to its allies for geopolitical re reasons, meaning you're in our camp. See, they never thought it would be used against them because it was the bribe to be in the, in the, in the North Atlantic Alliance. We throw in uh, Australia, South, uh, South Korea and, and Japan, but, you know, the Western driven world. And that never in their wildest expectations or nightmares would they see an American president reverse that. So Donald Trump has a very good point. How, how is he doing it? Well, that's a different topic. Number two, um, have you noticed uh, Trump, um, any resistance to him in public, he goes on the offensive, gets on Twitter. Um, uh, because, look, Netanyahu, they lavish praise on Trump. He returns it. Uh, the crown prince of, uh, of, uh, of Saudi Arabia, he lavishes praise, too. OK. And he. he he likes that. So he does. He has a take no prisoners approach. Now, I know it's really popular with his base, but it does have po um, policy implications. Um, another thing is, is that um, the United States is not taking the approach, let's say, of George W. Bush and Barack Obama of wanting to be the preeminent, preeminent power of the Western world. Donald Trump is saying, get in, get in line or you're in trouble or we will sanction you. See, the, the whole sanction regime was always for the troublemakers that the U.S. didn't like. Now they're using that regime against their own friends and allies. So that's very interesting. Uh, again, the policy implications of that can be really tricky. Um, the nature of, of, uh, of uh, uh, a trade war is you can always push back. And we saw this happen in the 1930s, and we know politically what happened as a result. So it's, it's, it's quite dangerous. He's in his art of the deal mode. He's a transactional guy. So he th thinks they're going to back down. And you know what? They probably will, or to a great degree. All right? They, they, you know, after 70 years of not having a spine, of, be, of learning to exist without a spine, um, they've just gotten used to it. All right? Um, though we'll, we'll see what the, imp uh, what the implications will be. I, like I said, I know it's very popular with the base, at least rhetorically for Trump. And tr Trump is, you know, he's thinking about the, uh, the, uh, the midterms, okay? He's thinking about the Mueller report, okay? He's thinking about a lot of things um, uh, on the world stage. Another layer of it, and this is something that you know that I always kind of harp on, is I just put on Facebook that, that famous picture of Trump sitting down them surrounding him. Abs, that's one of the greatest, that's like a Yalta picture, you know? I mean, that's, that's going to be around for a long time, all right? Um, it is a um, Trump versus the postmodernists. This is an ideological divide here. And, and, and it, it's really important. And I, I, and, you know, and you have, and I don't, I, I don't want to be um, uh, dismissive or mean, but you have a very effeminate, you know, G7, you know, minus Trump, G7. Six, okay, Macron. I mean Trudeau. 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 They're, they're, they're they're very feminine. They're very soft, um, and, and they've enveloped this this postmodernist uh, identity, meaning no identity. Um, uh, and it doesn't it doesn't work with Trump. Trump, it, it, he's an alpha uh, uh, alpha male, and he sees weakness. He that's part of his playbook, man. He's a rabbit. He'll go for it, okay. I mean, his base loves this, okay. And then you had, you know, uh, Merkel bending over like a school teacher, okay? And he's just like, no way, you know? And then you have that crow, Theresa May, you know? They didn't even have a bilateral, okay? That says a lot. I mean, so you can't even be a poodle with t Trump now, okay? You're even lower than that. It's, it's really amazing. Um, so I think he, this is part of his playbook. Um, it's, it's very, very unorthodox, and I've never seen anything like this in my life. See, Trump thinks that he, he comes out and he, and he shows some really strong cards, and he's saying, 
and he's looking right in the eye of them and saying, I even got stronger ones. Test me. I mean, I guess one of the greatest captions, I mean, I actually watched it last night. It's, you know, it's basically uh, Clint Eastwood, make my day. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 So, and, so I, and he, know, he, he knows that, you know, um, they're gonna, they're, there's going to be a lot of trepidation on their part because, first of all, they, like I said, they just don't, they're not used to doing this here. Uh, on the, a, a side note, on the margin, where was Vladimir Putin? China. Okay, that wasn't a coincidence. It wasn't a coincidence. And, you know, the issue of um, um, Trump saying, well, why shouldn't Russia be um, at the table? Is if Russia wants to be at that table. There's no inkling in my mind. You know, there's a few liberals in, in, the, in the Russian government that would probably like that. You know, another little junket and photo op. But, you know, Putin doesn't want to be there after everything's been said and done over the last few years. No, that's that train left the station, guys. It's gone, and it's not coming back. Because what when when the G when the G seven uh, uh, came into being in the nineteen seventies, you know the G seven they, they were fifty percent of world GDP, and now it's less than thirty. It's 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 not relevant. It's simple. It's not relevant. I mean, if you want to make it, you know, uh, about economics, and it really that's what it's always about. Then where's where's Russia? Where's China? Where's India? Where's Brazil? Okay. Ah. You know, for me, it, it, it's a very snobby, um, uh, um, uh, cozy, um, I'm okay, you're okay, postmodernist, uh, you know, hangout. And it, it's, it's not really worth anything. They didn't get anything done. They didn't accomplish anything. Trump wouldn't sign the communique. And he just really snubbed him, said, I'm, I'm going to go do business. I'm going to go to Singapore and see if I can hang out, hammer out a real deal. Okay. But, you know, all the kidding aside, this is part of his tactics. And, he, and I, I think you noticed it as well as I do. Who was hovering in the background? John Bolton was there like Darth Vader. OK. And of course, that the, the, Trump feeds off that. You know, he just looks at John Bolton. John Bolton's like, you know, hey, push harder. Go ahead. And that feeds into Trump's ego. OK. He, you know, with John Bolton there, it doesn't matter who's in the room because he, he has he has someone that has his back as he sees it. OK. Because the rest of them are irrelevant, and they're not relevant players in the, in the mind, in Trump's mind. But you know, let me go back to the, fr the first point that I brought up, and this is significant, and it can be, it can be very worrisome, it, it, because this is a world historic moment. The United States doesn't want to lead the Western world. It wants to dominate. It's different. Those are different ideas. And this is a departure from what we saw, this kind of G7 culture that has been around for decades. So that's really significant. Will it work? I don't know. It's too early to say. Here, here's what I think. I'll float a theory by you. I think Macron pissed off Trump with his tweet about, you know, you're going to be isolated and six people can sign an agreement. So I think Trump, went, before he got on that uh, helicopter to go to Toronto, I think he was just pissing off the other six members by giving his Russia should be at the G7 comment. What do you think about that? Well, he said that before, also, before he went to the summit. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think the, the thing is, is there's a, I have the sense um, that uh, Trump thinks he could actually do business with Putin because he can't do business with these folks, okay? These folks don't have much power. They, um, none of the, you know, Macron, you know, he's no de Gaulle, Okay. <laughs> Okay, Theresa May is no Margaret Thatcher. Okay, you know, as much as I disagreed with Margaret, Margaret Thatcher, as a good English friend of mine told me a long time ago, he was a real lefty. He said Margaret Thatcher taught me everything I need to know about politics. That's a that's a really smart comment. And I think that, you know Trump is a shaker and a mover, and he believes in his own his own shtick. Okay, and he really believes that he could actually make a difference that way. Um, you know, of course, we saw how everybody jumped on it, um, and um, there there is um, rumors that the two might meet, but I don't know if it really would be a wise idea. I don't really know what they could accomplish. I mean, with this class, this artificial um, uh, Russian collusion delusion, you know, that's still around, even though you and I both know it's all turning into Clinton Gate. It's you know, it it was all about. Um, uh, covering up for uh, Hillary and, 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 and sticking it to Trump. And it's, it's being transparently exposed, if you want to watch. Well, well now Trump is, is sticking it to the world. And, and so he's, he's got it with Macron. He, he really just spanked Trudeau. I mean, he spanked Trudeau. The host. The host. Yeah. And, and they say now he's going to go after auto imports, which means 
Merkel and Germany. How far can Trump take this, in your opinion? Can he go all the way? He could, but yes, he could go all the way. The United States has enough leverage over its allies. However, there's a caveat. It's the time frame. Um, if he wants to go all out, you know, you know, the full Monty with this tariff thing, which, you know, that seems like something that he inherently feels comfortable with as a businessman. He understands that kind of stuff. You know, he knows that Netanyahu and the well, wants Jerusalem and uh, the U.S. to move its uh, embassy there. And he thinks, what does it cost me? OK, fine, sign it. But tariffs is something very, very different. OK, and, and he understands how it works. Now, what do I mean by time frame? We could see um, con congressional districts of his base impacted by this. It's already happening. The Chinese are uh, uh, lowering imports of, uh, of soybeans and getting it from South America. That could hurt. Um, uh, also, um, energy uh, uh, costs, all kinds of um, uh, uh, raw materials and things like that. See, you could, you need time to balance it out, and it, it, it conceivably it could work. It conceivably could work, but. The damage that it could do to his base, and the Europeans are targeting like Harley Davidson whiskey, um, other things that that, that is in his um, uh, that affects his political base. So you know, uh, can you know? It's not inconceivable. People say, well, you know, it hurts now, but you know, it'll be better later. I mean, these are Trump supporters, okay? So I don't discount it completely, but it it could have a a knock on effect that Trump really doesn't understand the. The sting, let's put it to the, uh, that way, all right? And, and, you know, depending on who you are, it's, like, it's relative what a sting means. I mean, it takes your entire livelihood away. Well, that really hurts, okay? So um, I, I, I'm against, um, uh, obviously, trade wars. They don't, everybody loses. But there has to be, it has to be put back into balance uh, because, you know, the U.S. has just given it uh, its largesse for geopolitical reasons, but it hollowed out the middle class and hollowed out American industry. Uh, can that be reversed? Maybe. Maybe. It's never happened before, Alex. We've never seen anything like this in history. So this could be a world historic event where there is a major reversal. But historical trends say it's, it's very, very difficult to do. But yet, then again, you know, Reality and, and perception don't always have to be in sync. I mean, there can be the perception that you know, for Trump supporters, he's doing the right thing for America first, um, even in the, even though it, it may hurt them uh, uh, in their pocketbook. So we'll, we'll see where it goes. But I, I think that, you know, Trump is having a whale of a time. He really enjoys it. OK, you know, it, it's a combination of two things. He, he knows what he's talking about when it comes to trade. He, he really does. He's been talking about it for 30 years. OK. And. It's the New York tabloid wars, which, you know, everybody thinks, you know, you know, how can this guy take it, you know, day after day? Oh, when he was in New York City, his, his private life was all over the tabloids all the time. I mean, this is nothing new for him. You know, insulting Donald Trump, you know, maybe he remembers the first one, but he could care less about the last 10,000. OK, he could care less. And that's what makes this president interesting and, and, and unique. OK. Because he has a skill set that we've never seen in a president like this, like, like in Donald Trump. It, it's, he's world historic in that sense. So, so in a game of chicken, it could sting the U.S., but how could this sting Europe? And I'm sure the Europeans saw exactly what was happening between Putin and Xi in China. So if the U.S. could get stung by Trump taking it all the way, what, can, what effect could this have to Europe? Well, what it is is it, 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 particularly like, like say for the Germans that, and I think everybody agrees. You know, they they make very good machinery, good cars. Um, you know, you could start putting a block on that, and that's going to start hurting them. Um, and and a, and a lot of people, you know, we can throw in the Russia angle again. Is that you know Russia is the biggest consumer market in Europe, and the American that have almost no economic relationship with Russia, the Europeans are going to say, well, we've got to start, you know, we have to have a better portfolio of trade. I mean, Russia is the biggest consumer market in Europe, and it's in the neighborhood. And there's going to, if the, 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 if the, the, the German in, uh, industrial um, uh, leadership, the elites, and they have a lot of power, I mean, Merkel does listen to them. Um, they're going to say, look, okay, the U.S. It doesn't want to have the, the same kind of um, a trading relationship, which was very preferential for Europe. Well, let's go turn to the to the Russians. The Russians want to have trade with us. On top of it, another interesting caveat is if you if we could call this uh, Trump's cold shoulder. 
and and I actually kind of appreciate this because logic kicks in. So, um, well, I, was it Merkel or it was another you know, major European figure? So we can't rely upon the United States to protect us anymore. Okay, so so, um, but you still don't want to pay um, your fair share in, uh, of uh, NATO budgets. Okay, so. If you if you have to start paying for your defense, that's how I say this to the entire European Union. Okay, you pay for your defense. So how threatening is Russia when you have to pay for it? That threat will be re-examined completely, completely, because the Italians are going to say, uh-uh, <laughs> the Greeks won't, the French won't. Um, uh, you think Luxembourg cares or Belgium or Netherlands? Okay, the Eastern Europeans will kick up a little bit of dust, but they are second-class uh, countries in the European Union. It's just a, uh, it's just a fact, okay? Um, so this cold shoulder has a knock-on effect in a number of realms, okay? Trade, foreign policy, you know, and we, you know, we have this. This is just another event, a, a whole uh, litany of things, okay? The Iran deal, which the Europeans are really smarting over still. Because the Germans and others have really significant trading relationship with with Iran. It's a it's a it's a huge market. It's a sophisticated market. Has a lot of potential. And if the Americans don't want to play. Others will. And what this does is, of course, everybody wants to meet with Vladimir Putin now because of all of this that's going on. Okay, there's one you know, love him or hate him, there's one guy on the world stage that just keeps going in a straight line, and that's Vladimir Putin, okay? The Chinese love having him as a visitor. I think P Putin's met Xi more than any other leader now? It's something like that, yeah. 25 times, 25 times now. This, this whole thing, um, I still think that Trump believes, uh, and, he may, and maybe this is kind of all by himself, is that he thinks that he can partner with Russia and derail the, the Chinese-Russian relationship. And I'd say, Donald Trump, that is just not in the cards anymore. You don't have enough to offer. You just don't, okay? And you're in a, even if you get elected again, you're still an ephemeral figure, okay? And considering all the things that are changing, they, 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 it's too unstable for the Russians even to consider that. And unfortunately, as I've been predicting and I was researching it this morning, Ukraine is gonna heat up. It's heating up right now. And I'm here, in Moscow, the World Cup is about to begin, and there's just a very strong feeling, false flag, somebody's going to try to mess up the reputation of the of the World Cup here domestically somewhere, and of course, um, uh, Ukraine could get in, into another boiling point, which of course is just a uh, PR stunt. You know, people die, but it's a PR stunt that uh, Poroshenko and his uh, Western and backers um, um, put on for show. So you think they're going to, they, they may do something not only to hurt Russia, but to also hurt Trump's uh, momentum, especially now that he's going to be going to Singapore. And you have Singapore now with North Korea, you have the World Cup coming up, you have this G7 where Trump just really just made a fool of just about every European leader. You think that something might happen going into the... Well, I think, it, I think of the Skripals, um, uh, the uh, Duma, um, uh, um, uh, alleged poisoning in Syria. These are all connected in my mind. Okay, they're all connected, and I think the the next shoe to drop is going to be something related to Ukraine. It's very interesting because Putin and Poroshenko recently had a telephone uh, conversation and um, making it very clear. And, and Putin had, and during his marathon uh, um, uh, Q and A session, which gets no, no coverage hardly in Western media, you can actually learn a lot. I mean, it's a big investment of time. Of time. Um, I think Alexander McCurris wrote something on this. It was very, very good. Um, you know, he's just making very clear that um, the, the Donbass, the people of the Donbass, they will not fall, period. They will not fall. And he's making it very, very clear. Okay, the, the Ukrainians have walked away from the Minsk uh, process. Um, they said the only process is, is the Normandy one, and the Russians aren't even invited. I mean, you know, it doesn't make any sense at all. So... There's a lot of lot of things in play right now. Um, of course, as uh, uh, Trump is uh, in Singapore, um, we're going to have uh, the uh, the, um, the Justice Department there, the uh, um, uh, Justice Department re report coming out. Uh, that's very, very important. And there's no coincidence they're going to release it when he's out of the country. Um, we have this thing going on with Ukraine, and of course, um, the negotiations going on with North Korea. It's not a slam dunk. This is one of the most interesting things I've ever seen in my life. Everybody is wondering where it could go. The most important thing to remember, and again, 
this is not for American centric media consumption, is that what's really in play here, Alex, is the dialogue between the two Koreas. This is the most important thing because we could have another like G7 moment where the North and South Koreans will say, well, if Donald Trump doesn't want to play, we can play. The Chinese are helping out and the, the Russians are helping, uh, help, helping out too. So it is not so, it, it's not so focused on Trump as I think the media would like to present. It's, he's part of the process. And if anyone should deserve any credit for any of this, it's President uh, Moon of South Korea, I mean, turning into an amazing statesman, um, um, having to have to work with the North and Donald Trump simultaneously. And I have to wonder what kind of communications he's been having with the Chinese, which I think is pretty sure that it's there. So the, they have an agenda. They have a schedule. They have a, a checklist. Um, you know, if Donald Trump uh, with uh, John Bolton there, I don't, I don't know if he's going to be there. I think maybe there's some kind of deal that he has to kind of stay on the sidelines because uh, of his remarks. We'll see where that goes there. But he's, sir, John Bolton certainly had a high profile in Canada. I just thought that was amazing. How, so these are, these are very interesting times right now. How, how would you rate uh, Trump's so far, given the G7, given what's going on with North Korea? Um, how would you rate so far his foreign policy uh, week that he had? For the last couple of weeks. Does he know what he's doing? I think he thinks he knows, he knows what he's doing. There's so many elements pulling at him. And, you know, unfortunately, we talked about this before. He's just surrounded himself with so many people that I just abhor. Um, I think give him bad advice. I think leaving the Iran deal was a really big mistake um, uh, because it was actually working. I don't care if it's a legacy of the Obama, Obama administration. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, moving the uh, um, embassy to Jerusalem was a terrible mistake, in my opinion, and in the, in the implications of which will be felt for a long time. Um, I, I, on the trade things, I give him points. I give him points on trade because he knows what he's talking about. Um, and, you know, being my origins are, is Midwestern. And, you know, and I have a, an, after, even after living away uh, abroad for so many years, I have a very strong attachment to a Midwestern mentality. You know, the flyover states, okay? And they're hurting. They're really hurting. Is this going to be the silver bullet to uh, save them? I don't know. But it's certainly the first president in my lifetime that actually cares about the middle, the, uh, the Midwest and, and good, hardworking, you know, um, uh, religious, conservative people, okay? They have their president. Okay? Though he's kind of, he's a bull in a china shop, okay? I mean, for one thing, being in media, he certainly keeps us busy, okay? I mean, you never know. But, um, so on trade and things like that, I, he's moving in the right direction. If it's is it too brash? Maybe will it backfire? Could it's a, there's a lot of unknowns out there. I've never uh, faced a, um, uh, a, a a political uh, calculus like this before. I mean, it's my, I'm supposed to do this, and I'm I'm more and more often I'm like I don't know. I mean, this is interesting to watch. Yeah, it, it it makes for great for great television. That's for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. But um, anyway, Peter, Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk, thank you very, very much for an interesting and fascinating analysis as to the week that passed the G7 and the week ahead in, uh, in Singapore and, of course, the World Cup in Ukraine and a lot of topics just going on. And Trump is, is just shaking things up. Peter Lavelle, host of RT's super popular Crosstalk. Check it out. Everyone watching this video, do not forget to click that red subscribe button down below. Click the notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. And visit the Duran shop, pick up a t-shirt, help support the Duran, help support our broadcasts. Until next time, take care.